This video describes the operation of DC logic controls in Northern Lights generators through 40 kilowatts with the gray rectangular Deutsch plug control connector. If you've worked on small Northern Lights generators before, you know that the heart of the control system is this set of four relays in the junction box. But what do they do? Let's take a look. Keep in mind that this discussion applies to generators that use a gray, rectangular plug to connect to the control panel. If you have a black round plug, please refer to our Merck plug logic video. This diagram shows a simplified version of the generator control wiring. Several details, such as the alternator and gauge senders, are omitted for clarity. The drawing can be divided into three sections. First is the engine side. Note that we don't show the negative connection for the main engine components. These are grounded to the engine block on standard ground models, or wired to the negative post of the starter on isolated ground models. The generator's electrical junction box contains the DC logic for engine operation. A circuit breaker protects the control system and the wires to the control panel. The preheat relay controls power to the glow plugs for cold engine starts. The start relay controls power to the starter solenoid. The run relay is active while the engine is running and supplies power to the fuel rack solenoid and other ignition loads. The shutdown relay uses normally closed contacts to keep the run relay coil latched on while the engine is running. The blocking diodes prevent control power from feeding in the wrong direction during startup and operation. The protective shutdown circuit consists of three safety switches that close to battery negative and trigger the shutdown relay when there is low oil pressure, high coolant temperature, or high temperature at the wet exhaust elbow. The next section is the control panel, which contains control switches and panel meters. The preheat and shutdown bypass switch activates the preheat relay for cold engine starts and also keeps the engine running until oil pressure builds up right after starting. The generator control switch provides start and stop control. Simple control panels include only an hour meter and run light, while more advanced panels add pressure, temperature, and DC voltage gauges. The panel is connected to the generator by an extension harness. The extension harness contains eight wires, but we are omitting the gauge sender wires for simplicity. Let's take a look at the wiring with the generator at rest. The negative side of the battery is connected to the preheat, run, and start relay coils, and to the start-stop switch and meters on the control panel. As there is no oil pressure, the oil pressure shutdown switch is active, connecting the shutdown circuit to battery negative. The positive side of the battery is connected to the contacts of the start and preheat relays. And after the circuit breaker, it connects to the run relay contact and both of these switches on the control panel. Now, let's run the genset. We begin by holding down the preheat and shutdown bypass switch. This energizes the preheat relay coil, which closes the preheat relay contacts and energizes the glow plugs. If the engine is cold, we can hold the preheat switch for 10 to 20 seconds before we crank the starter. The run relay control circuit is also energized through the lower blocking diode. 
The upper blocking diode prevents the relay control circuit from directly powering all of the ignition loads in the moment before the run relay contacts close, which could damage the lower diode. The run relay control circuit powers the panel meters and the run relay coil. The run relay contacts close, energizing the ignition circuit. The ignition circuit powers the fuel rack and the shutdown relay. Because the shutdown relay is energized, the normally closed contacts are now open and the run relay is not latched. Once we have adequately preheated the engine, we can crank the starter. We engage the start switch on the control panel, which energizes the start relay coil, closes the start relay contacts, and cranks the starter. Once the engine starts, we can release the start switch. However, we need to hold the preheat bypass switch to bypass the safety shutdown system as oil pressure is still building. When the oil pressure is high enough, the shutdown circuit is disconnected from battery negative, the shutdown relay is de-energized, and the normally closed contacts in the shutdown relay provide latching for the run relay. We can now release the preheat and bypass switch, de-energizing the preheat relay and the glow plugs. The lower blocking diode prevents the preheat relay coil from being energized by the run relay latching circuit. Now, we can continue generating reliable Northern Lights power for as long as we care, but at some point, we'll need to stop the generator. There are two ways that the generator can stop. We can stop it manually via the control panel, or the safety shutdown switches will automatically stop the generator if the coolant temperature or oil pressure reach unsafe levels. Both methods work the same way, so we will look at what happens when we use the stop function of the generator control switch. Activating the shutdown circuit energizes the shutdown relay coil, which opens the run relay latching circuit and removes power from the run relay control circuit. This de-energizes the panel meters and the run relay coil. The run relay contacts open and remove power from the ignition circuit, turning off the fuel system and the shutdown relay, and we can release the stop switch. As the engine comes to rest, the oil pressure drops and eventually triggers the oil pressure shutdown switch, connecting the shutdown circuit to battery negative, and we are back to the resting state that we started from. One last thing. If your generator uses an S3 control panel with engine gauges, you will find an additional relay mounted on the back of the panel. The reason for this is the blocking diode. A characteristic of diodes is that they reduce the voltage by roughly one half of a volt when current is flowing through them. This drop is small enough that it doesn't affect the operation of the run relay, hour meter, or the panel indicator light. However, if you have gauges, the voltmeter would indicate this lower voltage, and you might be concerned about your charging system. We alleviate this by supplying power to the gauges through a panel relay. When the circuit is energized, the panel relay supplies full voltage to the gauges. For further information, consult your operator's manual, visit the Northern Lights website, or contact your local dealer.